Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Uh, very excited to be here. Very excited to be on Miami Community Radio. Very excited to be speaking to the viewers at home. Um, to We are with Art for the People. We're on the Art for the People Political Education and Propaganda Committee. Uh, and today we're going to be doing a, um, a discussion and political critique of Charlie Axiax's uh, most recent album, Brat. Uh, I'm here. Uh, Oh, I didn't say. My name is Ethel. I'm here with my friend Catavon. Um, we're we're very excited to discuss this album because there's there's a lot here and it's it's a really really interesting album. You know. Uh, yeah, get excited. This episode's for the girl and the gays. Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, just a disclaimer before we go in. Um, critique is not attack you know we both are like charlie's angels fans mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. we definitely have like bumped to this album it's a really good party album it's um, a great party album yeah. i personally speaking like technically i love it you know I've, I've been bumping it since like it dropped in the beginning of the summer i've really been enjoying like listening to the album um but like you know uh the the technical and the political are, are separate here um, and I think that's like kind of primary uh, in in our analysis here, you know. Yeah. So we can definitely appreciate things, but also you know hold a critical analysis of them. And um, you know we could look at this and say it's just a party album. Like let us have fun. Why are you trying to make things political? Um, which honestly, at first I we kind of thought like is yeah. that really mm -hmm. something we want to like. Um, engage. It, is this worth engaging with? But I, I think it's very interesting. We'll definitely talk more about this later with Charlie Axiax uh, endorsing Kamala Harris uh, for president. You know, like, there is definitely a lot of political characters to this. And, like, also, uh, we'll talk more about this later as well. You know, the song Mean Girls, you know, being about, like, Dasha, from uh, one of the hosts on the podcast, Red Scare. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the there's lore a, is crazy with that. Th there's <laughs> a lot of very interesting lore that you, you may not think is political at first, but, like, there's a lot of political character to it. So. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, yes, like, this is a party album. You know, obviously, we're human. We want to be able to cope with, like, the horrors that are going on. Um, but, yeah, like, I'm glad a comrade reminded us that all art is a reflection of society. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, just that, you know, like Hadavan said, all art is a reflection of society, you know. Um, we, we get culture from, uh, you know, the economic base of society uh, that, like, drives uh, most creative fields. And, like, everything we do is, is stamped with the, the brand of a class, you know. Um, and a question I feel like we should be asking ourselves, not just for this piece, but for all art pieces, is like, what class is this serving? Uh, I think that's very important for us to really discuss here, is just like, who, like, who's this for, you know? Yeah, that's a super primary question when we're trying to make like a revolutionary Marxist analysis of things. And um, yeah, you know, it's, it's important to look at an album that's so popular right now, like Brat, you know, it's being called Album of the Summer, Brat Girl Summer. Um, so it is something that we should uh, take into critical consideration. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris is a brat, actually. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard. It's a very big thing right now, so. Yeah, so we'll get into that. But maybe first we'll just give some background on Charlie for like those who don't know. Um, you know, she's a hyper pop artist. Uh, was definitely like more like underground, less mainstream, I would say like a couple years ago. Yeah. But now with this like recent album drop, it's like really popped off. I, I would say the whole genre, like she's kind of grown with the genre, you know what I mean? And hyper pop uh, generally goes through these interesting phases where like it gets more popular in times of recession. You can look at like the indie sleaze movement in 2007, for example, where like, Indie sleaze, hyper pop was like popping off in like 2007, 2008 with that economic crisis. You know what I mean? And as we're like in and entering further into uh, our contemporary economic crisis, it's popping off once again. You know? 
So Yeah, exactly. So we can see like how political economy does influence art. You know, there's this message and hyper pop that comes about in these like really tumultuous political times that just says, you know, everything's going to be OK. Like, let's just dance. Mm -hmm. um, dance through it. You know, uh, the nuclear the nuclear bombs could drop any day down, but you won't just just dance, go to the club, go to the club. It's going to be chill. Don't even worry about it. You know. And again, like, we get it, you know, we got to seize joy, like, when we can, but to the root of this, it really is um, an escapist tendency that's found in a lot of art that, you know, doesn't really help us face the current harsh realities, but instead kind of just promotes, like, numbing, distracting, escaping from those really hard, like, exactly material conditions. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so... On that note, um, I think, yeah, we we could let's uh, let's get into Apple. Let's yeah, get into Apple. Let's do Apple. Um, So, um, I think in Apple, Charlie's actually doing something really interesting, and people have made tons of memes about it, you know, um, the Marxist, Charlieist, Kamalaist <laughs> dialectics, you know, um, where it's like she's talking about, you know, she's using the metaphor of like an apple uh, to represent like a sort of a struggle um, and, you know, splitting the apple. Uh, as being like separating the good and the bad or like, you know, the, the splitting of one into two, you know? Yeah, exactly. We kind of wanted to touch on this one. It's kind of been um, a really popular one, like a dance blew up on TikTok for it. Um, and it's, you know, it's one of the songs on the album that kind of touches on like deeper concepts, um, you know, trying to face and like heal from generational trauma. And like Ethel was saying, um, you know, this song, the analogy of the apple, it also really pairs well with um, a dialectical material understanding of ideological remolding. Exactly, yeah. Um, and in that way, it's because we can kind of think of ourselves um, as being like split into two, where we have like backwards aspects and we also have, um, you know, advanced. Advanced aspects or, or just, you know, um, things that we are not very good at and things that are, are you know, progressive inside of us, you know? Um, so, like, with that, you know, Charlie's really questioning on this song, like, oh, is the apple rotten to the core? Should we just throw it out? Um, are there aspects that we can take that, like, are genuinely helpful and healthy and progressive that we can, you know, incorporate into our lives? Um, is this, like something that we can use to progress, you know, or, or that she can use to progress. Because, like, most of the album is, is centered around, like, her own personal struggle. Um, but, like, obviously we can identify with this. Um, yeah. And in the whole, like, exploring the apple, you know, digging deep, getting on that introspective level, which, you know, we all need to do, whether it be things that have been passed down from family or things that you know, are just very deep rooted that we've been like socialized into. Yeah, exactly. Things that we've picked up from so, uh, our peers, you know, our jobs, uh, culture, all of society, you know. Yeah. And when we, you know, make it um, Marxist, <laughs> it's basically like looking at what are the capitalist ideology that we still hold and that we're actively trying to eliminate. And it's an everyday like protracted struggle. And, um, you know, just making sure, meanwhile, while you are trying to work on those flaws, like, don't forget, like, the strengths you have and, like, simultaneously trying to grow that. So going back to the song, you know, she talks about thinking maybe it's all just rotten to the core. There's nothing good there. 
Um, you know, she talks about pushing herself, I guess, to investigate more. Let me split the apple down. Let me try to get to the root, face things. Um, but yeah, it's that temptation comes that um, is there for a lot of us of like it being a really scary, really hard process to do and wanting to uh, escape, wanting to drive um, and fly away and not really wanting to face that, but Esca you know. Escaping from the problem. And a core theme of the album is like, do I deal with you know the fundamental problem or do I like just try to escape from the problem, whether it be by, uh, by driving, which is a common motif in Charlie's work, uh, flying away, or partying. And in this album, uh, really, it, it's partying that's like uh, at, at the core of like escapism here. Um, you know, a lot of this album is really just like about the conflict of, you know, do I address these these problems that I'm having, um, or do I just like run away from these problems and go back to the party? Um, yeah, and also like asking ourselves like what are the conditions that would like lend itself to more of that like ideological transformation? Exactly, you know, because we all we all you know struggle with these things ex internally, um, but we we need you know external conditions, you know, a community of some kind, uh, people around us who uh, are you know are there to to help us in the struggle, like in, in any struggle we may have. Uh, uh, especially like with ideological struggle, you know, uh, to really combat backwards ideas, um, you know, capitalist ideas that exist inside of our brains and, and bring forward, you know, working class ideas that are actually like progressive and, and work towards, you know, helping, um, you know, the, the mean of society, you know. Yeah, so. so exactly. Like, it does get really overwhelming and scary when we're having to do this alone. But exactly. a good example is, um, like, on our last meeting in our political education committee, we really took this seriously, you know? We wanted to analyze ourselves, divide ourselves, really identify what are our main strengths and weaknesses and how can we support our comrades in trying to transform. Mm -hmm. how, can we, how can we, you know, develop our strengths and eradicate our weaknesses, you know? And what that looked like for us was like we, you know, we all made lists of like what our in individual strengths and weaknesses are, uh, and just had like group discussions about them, you know, where it was like a very open critique of like the things that we struggle with, you know, ideologically, um, and that may that's not just like political positions that we have, right? That's discipline. That's how we act in the world, you know. Uh, where do these behaviors come from and what, are, what is at the root of those behaviors? Like that's really the important thing. And those struggles are, are very difficult and scary to tackle because, you know, everything in society is telling us that this is okay. You know, that like, um, you, that these aren't really worth caring about. That like, you know, everything's gonna be fine, just don't worry. Yeah, it's easy to just disengage from that process altogether of not wanting to take those like next steps of growth and transformation. I'm thinking about like how Charlie talks about her own parents in the song and how she's just like, they don't get it, they don't listen, they don't understand me. So it's kind of showing that, yeah, you know, when you don't do that work, that's um, when the generational trauma continues to be passed down. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for us as revolutionaries to engage in that mental battlefield um, yeah. constantly and mm -hmm. have the support from comrades to do so. Definitely, definitely. Um, I think one of the most important things here is really having the support from like comrades uh, who are, you know, willing to go th through this ideological struggle through uh, with you. Um, because that is one of the things that will assist, you know, your own personal development the most. It's like having people around you who are, who are willing to uh, celebrate your strengths mm -hmm. and, and really, you know, also looking to help you, like, eradicate your weaknesses. Yeah, it was really cool. Like, I had comrades named strengths that, like, I didn't see previously. Um, and, yeah, like, recommend different support that... I couldn't have gotten on my own, and it's like accelerated my development tremendously. A hundred percent. Mass orgs, y'all, join them. Yeah. Get some yeah, revolutionary yeah. comrades. Um, um, and maybe also like a shout out to the song "Back to Back." Um, it also deals with like similar themes of wanting to engage um, in that ideological like transformation, not wanting to 
fall backwards into like old toxic beliefs and like patterns. Um, and yeah, just again, like in her line um, in that song, she talks about like having to constantly break herself down, build herself up. Mm -hmm. um, definitely like, you know, reminiscent of having to like break down all of the like ruling class ideology that we've inherited and, um, you know, actively telling yourself like not to go back to the backwardness, but it happens, you know. Yeah. In, in anything, it's one, it's a protracted struggle. This all takes time, you know. It, it would be completely unreasonable for us to expect that, like, oh, we're just going to magically politically develop overnight as soon as, as soon as, like, anyone criticizes us or we realize a mistake that, like, we'll, we'll just magically fix them. That's, that's absurd, you know. Uh, it takes a lot of conceded work and effort to really, you know, develop... Uh, politically and ideologically, you know, to, to get to the root of these problems and to resolve these contradictions, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is something where, like in, like, like Charlie says, you know, uh, breaking yourself down and building yourself back up again, uh, like, you, you will take steps forward on and you will take steps back on, you know? It's not a linear process, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, one day, you know, you, you, you may advance, one day you may fall back, and it's really having your comrades around you uh, that like develops, you know, hey, you know, you're backsliding, you know what I mean? What, why, why is this happening? What's at the root of this, you know? Um, or, or like, hey, you know, that was a really good thing that you just did. Uh, you know, I just, I wanna like let you know that was like really cool uh, and, and support you in that, so. Yeah, and something I appreciate about like this like Marxist culture of like critique and support um, is it really also helps you like fight against perfectionism because we are able to like recognize our errors but that like it's a learning lesson really um, and that you know we're we're kind of always gonna have these like advanced and backwards aspects and instead of getting so bogged down on our faults like we can also focus on the strengths and growing those and um, yeah, it's a really refreshing, like, helpful way to look at it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, it's one of the most healthy ways to look at development that, I, that I've ever encountered in my life. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, you know, kind of addressing <laughs> conflicts and tensions yeah. between people and mm -hmm. songs, um, maybe we could now transition to talking about Sympathy is a Knife, um, also very interesting lore with this one. A lot of very interesting <laughs> lore. Uh, I can't wait to get into that. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so yeah, sort of some of the backstory of this song mm -hmm. um, is it's speculated to be about Taylor Swift. Um, and in this song, Charlie just kind of goes into her struggles with like comparing herself to an artist like Taylor Swift, who's like a huge pop star idol. Um, and yeah, like aspiring for sort of the markers that make like a superstar pop like a like a mega star you know yeah so she talks about like you know wanting like that same type of commercial success and wealth and recognition um and it's interesting like when i first heard this i was like very surprised that like charlie was even comparing herself to an artist like taylor mm -hmm. um because in the song like she says how they're just on opposite sides of like music um, you, like they're both in pop right but like completely different ends of like the pop spectrum where it's like Taylor is doing I, I guess what I would describe more as like country pop almost mm -hmm. whereas like Charlie is definitely closer to like hyper pop and like to it, it 
I the only real linking factor is like, you know, one, both of these are like musical art pieces, right? And two is like who's selling better on the billboard charts, you know? Mm-hmm. Like who who's ranking higher, you know what I mean? And that's really like where 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 it comes down to with Charlie is like wanting to have Taylor's position, you know? Yeah, and it's something like a lot of artists can relate to in sort of like measuring ourselves to these like ruling class standards of like what success are. Um, And that's something that we do need to actively fight against Mm -hmm. Um, because, yeah, you know, these these bourgeois standards aren't asking how does this serve the people? It's more about how does this serve my myself and my own like interests? Yeah, yeah. Um, Like it's a matter of, you know, in art, like I said earlier, you know, all art. All things, really, all ideas are, are stamped with, like, the brand of a class. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, what does that mean when I, when I say that, right? It's, like, everything that we, you know, every idea we have, every art piece we make, everything we produce, you know, is in, in service of one class or another, you know? Um, and in, like, the, the standards of art, that Charlie is adhering to is like a, a, it's a bourgeois standard of art. It's a capitalist standard of art, um, you know, and uh, like that's fueling a lot of the um, like tensions and contradictions that she's referring to in the song with like, you know, um, like wanting to compete with Taylor and like they, they grow to like such a point where she's talking about like wanting to buy a gun, wanting to shoot herself and like, you know, it's like very, very, you know, pressing um yeah we see how like capitalist culture really promotes like this environment of like you know there's only a few spots at the top mm -hmm. so we need to compete um there's jealousy which at the same like at the same time yeah you know that is true there are limited spots of success among the bourgeoisie they're a minority they're gonna stay a minority while you know they continue to exploit the masses so in that sense it does make sense um but also, like, Charlie has really interesting, like, contradictions as an yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in her earlier years, she talks about how, like, her main motivation as an artist was to prove to people you don't have to be, like, a commercial big success. You can just, um, like, do your own thing and, like, make music that makes people a bit mental. Like, it was just, you know, mm-hmm. about, like, having fun, being yourself, not sort of selling out to the industry Mm -hmm. but you know we also need to recognize like charlie's class position um and the material conditions that really like set her apart from the masses um and you know we can we can see that in the song and how she's even though you know she had that motivation she's still been in the game for so many so many years she knows how to play it she knows how to sell records that the record de- like labels want her to make so in that way um, she still is very much like part of that system i mean she's been in the game since she was like 14 right so to say all this stuff while you know w- working in this industry since you were like in the be- entering the beginning of your teen years, like you you know how this industry functions, you know. Um, so like, we we can talk all we want about like, oh, you know, I I just want to make music that like I like and that makes people like go a little bit mental and that people can party to, uh, and then you know turn around and be like, where am I on the Billboard charts? You know, like how am I? comparing to Taylor Swift, who's, like, the biggest uh, female artist out right now, you know? Uh, And, like, she does all this while still, you know, claiming to uphold, like, a particular type of feminism, which is, like, bourgeois feminism, you know? It's capitalist feminism. Uh, Yeah, mm -hmm. and, you know, bourgeois feminism likes to paint it, like, you know, women ride for women, Um, but yeah, you know, we see how in the reality, like, you know, among bourgeois women, there's competition, um, you know, also in the song, Girl So Confusing, um, we see like some of those tensions of like the industry producing divisions between them. Um, and yeah, so it's really important to like recognize how, 
as artists, like, it's pretty, it's, I feel like it's a tension that a lot of us deal with of, like, you know, wanting to be authentic, but also wanting to be successful. And as Marxists, you know, we would, like, add another dimension, which is, like, does it serve the people? Yeah, yeah. Does it, does it serve, you know, the proletariat, the working class? Yeah. And I feel like that's shown in the line, like, why do I want to buy a gun? Which, like, we're for. Okay, like, yeah, let's get yeah, the working yeah, class armed. Yeah, Hello. you know, <laughs> the proletariat should definitely be armed. Yes, 100%. Um, but then it's, like, you know, to shoot myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just kind of, like, reflective of, like, the despair in our society of, like, you know, wanting to inflict this violence on ourselves rather than, like, on the system that's, like, the root of all this violence. It, it, it's, like, and we see this a lot, right? There's so much anger. There's so much violence in society. You know, it was uh, quite literally, you know, an assassination attempt on, you know, former President Donald Trump, uh, like, last week, you know. Um, but, like, we have to, you know, really analyze, like, one, like, where, where should this violence be going, you know? Because, like, self-harm is never productive, A, first off. And B, it's, like, okay, you know, the bourgeoisie is our enemy, you know? This, like, I feel like we can, you know, just say this. is like, the bourgeoisie is our objective enemy here. Um, how should, like, we go about, you know, um, like, attempting to overthrow the bourgeoisie, you know? Um, is, like, an ass assassination attempt something viable? No, no. We've seen this over and over again. Um, you know, you, you take one down, another one will grow in its stead, you know what I mean? It, an assassination attempt does absolutely nothing to deal with, like, state machinery or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, you know, we, we need to be very targeted with, like, what we say when, like, we're angry about certain types of things, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. where should this anger go, you know, against the bourgeoisie and the classes, it's, uh, against, the, like, the state and the classes it upholds, you know? Yeah, make the ruling class your enemy, not yourself. Yeah, exactly. Um, I got a little bit off topic there. <laughs> no. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, and, like, just to bring it back, a really great resource on this is talks at Yunnan Forum by Mao. Mm -hmm. He really talks about, you know, how artists um, who really want to be cultural workers and... Um, be part of the movement to educate the masses, unite them, one heart, one mind, towards revolution, which serves their material interests, which serves collective liberation. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, as artists, we can really serve to deliver really powerful messages and consciousness to the masses. Mm -hmm. Getting, uh, I want to touch more on, you know, what, like, what Charlie's putting forward here. Uh, I think it's really interesting that she up upholds this, like, uh, bourgeois feminist line um, because, like, like I mentioned earlier, right, she just, you know, Kamala Harris is a brat. She endorsed Kamala Harris for, for the presidency. And it's like, you know, I want to I wanna uplift uh, women, you know? I want to do that universally, right? But at the same time, she's uplifting a woman who is, like, facilitating a genocide in Palestine, you know? How many women are dead because of Kamala Harris? You know what I mean? Because of the entire bourgeoisie. Yeah, we it, it definitely goes to show, like especially with the issue of Palestine, that we can't expect much from these celebrities yeah, to yeah. Um, you know, be giving us the truth, to actually be aligned with our interests. Um, it's definitely exposed at this time. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think that's one of the most clear exposures is just like, you know... Any, any representative put forward by the bourgeoisie is, is not going to be in our interest. You know what I mean? If we could talk all day and night about, like, oh, who's, who's like, marginally worth by an nth of a degree, you know, like Kamala Harris or, or Donald Trump, when it's, like, it's, it's a very similar position, you know? Um, I don't want to get in, mired down by the details of that right now, so let's move on. I mean, definitely relevant, like oh, yeah, to yeah, yeah. like the bourgeois feminism point. Um, girl, so confusing, you know. 
Um, it's a it's a good example. Oh, well, for context, uh, it's basically like a song where Charlie talks about um, her feelings and relationship with another artist named Lord, mm -hmm. and um, just like very much overthinking the situation um, and sort of like letting her like feelings like fill in the blanks of the story, speculating like how Lord really feels about her. And then um, there's a remix song where Lord like really responds with like her side of the story. And um, in that we see like a really cool example, you know, of like struggle and unity. Um, you know, when we're able to like kind of fight against liberal culture that makes it that we don't want to confront people, we're scared they'll feel attacked. Um, when really like when they came to each other, they were able to like see how much they related. Yeah, exactly. They got they got the, the they got it out in the open, you know, um, which is so important because like you were saying, you know, uh, if you if you just like leave things uh, and, and don't discuss them and don't get them out in the open, you know, that leaves it op open to speculation. And these things, you know, can fester for like days, weeks, months or even years. Uh, and like that can create a, a, a beef over nothing. You know what I mean? When you, you could have just had a conversation uh, about like, you know, what was upsetting you and gotten it out in the open and resolved it like in an hour. Yeah. And where like bourgeois feminism comes in is like, you know, um, I also love Lord. I think it's like awesome that they worked it out on the yeah, remix. Yeah, yeah. Like that was an epic song. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, it ends with like solidarity between each other. But you know, do they ride for the proletariat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, it, it's just a matter of like, okay, you know, it's very cool. You guys are riding for each other. Great song, everybody. Um, why, why are we also riding for the bourgeois state apparatus? You know, uh, mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't feel like that's 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 really riding for the right people, you know. Yeah, yeah. So maybe should we move on to Mean Girls? Yeah, let's move on to Mean Girls. Okay, really excited to dig into yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. Lot of lot of very interesting lore in Mean Girls. So let's get into it. Yeah, it's 2 a.m. and she's out there in a sheer white dress wearing last night's makeup all coquettish in the pictures with the flash on. Worships Lana Del Rey in her AirPods. Yeah, yeah, she's in her mid 20s, real intelligent. Head and mystic with the gravel drool and dead eyes. You say she's anorexic and you heard she likes some people say it. Think you already know it, but you don't. All right. Okay, so Mean Girls. Um, Ethel, did you want to give some of the backstory? So, <laughs> oh God. So, Mean Girls is a song. Is it speculated or confirmed? Um, probably speculated, but it's like almost like 99.9 yeah, about yeah, yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's a, it's a song that's most likely about uh, Dasha Nekrasova. Uh, Dasha Nekrasova is um, one of the uh, members of uh, the Red Scare podcast. Red Scare is like um, this podcast that was really popping off like a few years ago, right around like 2020 to like 2022, right around there, um, where, you know, very like edge lordy, pseudo leftist, you know, le left aesthetics, let's say. Um, the like they would come together and like discuss you know political issues culture art things like that and like really just have like a horrible horrible lens um for some more added context red scare excuse me red scare is financed by peter Thiel. um i don't know for those who don't know who peter Thiel is peter uh, peter Thiel is uh, a, one of the founders of paypal uh, he has like a very strong root in the whole like Dime Square art movement that was popping off a few years ago, and has funded like a lot of uh, anti woke uh, art uh, deliberately. He's like a major propagandist and, and a, a very good one. You know, he's he's very skilled in maneuvering his propaganda. You know. Yeah, so we see, like, how invested the ruling class is in, like, producing a certain art. And, um, yeah, this whole, like, Dime Square arts movement that Ethel referenced, it's, like, this weird, like, niche, gentrified neighborhood, like, in New York. And, 
basically like that's where a lot of like these influencers like hub and their whole thing is about like you know having this like really cool aesthetic like with red scare like it's all about like having this like edgy leftist aesthetic but not really challenging any like capitalist ideology mm -hmm. still very much aligning with like rightist thought um and you can see why like surprisingly like celebrities really gravitate oh yeah that yeah, yeah like because they want to be like progressive but like not it, it's it's cool to do you know it's like um oh your favorite niche micro internet celebrity w like popped up around here like isn't that interesting you know yeah. like this this like mega celebrity is actually also interested in that why why would that be you know yeah, and, like, throughout the song, we see, like, it is just kind of purely, like, about, like, a brat aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not really, um, like, it's all about, like, the coquette and, like, the big crosses and, like, these micro trends, which, like, sort of, like, a common theme in the album is, like, this, like, propping up, glorification, worship, whatever word you want to use of, like, influencers, celebrities. Um, and really, like, something about these, like, influencers um is they really do feed into like m capitalist marketing you know yeah yeah um like with the coquette trend with the 90s trend with this like you know cross wearing trend it really promotes a lot of like over consumption mm -hmm. of fast fashion mm -hmm. it like not only that but it, it reinforces you know bourgeois ideology beyond that you know it reinforces like the overconsumption and, and and like the production of this this type of like you know uh very strange you know like anti-woke uh style of thinking you know where it's like um it, it's it's cool to be anti-progressive now you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, another great example is what uh what dasha had said about mia khalifa uh writing for palestine where you know oh can do you remember the quote yeah you know i wanted to do a little investigating on their political line and like as soon as i heard this i was like this yeah, is all i need to yeah. know but basically like they were just talking about like mia khalifa and her support of palestine and um just like saying like she's so dumb hamas would behead her mm -hmm. um so that's kind of like the theory that they're yeah yeah forward. yeah you know <laughs> um it, like it's very interesting that Charlie would, you know, go on to, like, platform this person uh, and, like, you know, describe her as, like, intelligent, you know. Uh, and hedonistic yeah, in the same line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or in the next line, yeah. Um, and, like, you know, she's coming out with, like, positions like these, you know. And, it, like, okay, it's very obvious, you know, like, who this is supposed to serve, you know, like, what kind of behavior is this is supposed to like lend itself to yeah know? and like while it's fun like you know like <laughs> definitely chronically online people yeah. felt seen by this yeah. album 100%. like you know Gabrielle. speaking speaking as a chronically online person <laughs> kind of loved the, loved the album at first you know Can't yeah lie. like me personally i'm a sucker for the 90s aesthetic so like i was watching gabrielle a while back you know like all about like the thin brows like a certain like great type of makeup like she actually just came out with like a mac lip kit that like got sold out really quick so mm -hmm. we can see like you know again a lot of these influencers what are they out for and they're out for you know this this capitalist success this wealth this fame and in their name they are very influential you know yeah, people want to yeah. emulate this cool aesthetic but we really got to dig deeper on how these are not like the role models for them exactly you know what i mean it's it's a matter of like you know getting rid of these these bourgeois idols that we have and and uh, like building up proletarian leadership building up working class leadership because that's really the only thing that's going to take us forward. Um, okay. Do you want to go into the next song? Because it's, it's 5.50. We are. This is going yeah. by faster than we expected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm having fun. So uh, the last song we're going to be talking about directly is 365. Uh, 365 is the song that ends the album. Uh, and it's also a very interesting song. Um, and we'll get into it more after we play it. So go ahead. I love hot when I'm... No, I really don't stop when I'm 
gonna jump when it drops when I'm down nine 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 it's a good time who the fuck are you I'm a brat when I'm bumping that no I wanna hear my track are you bumping that till the windows crack I'll be bumping that no I'll never go home don't sleep don't eat just do it on repeat keep when I'm in the club yeah I'm three six five party girl should we do it little key should we have a little nine gonna go real well when I'm maybe in the bathroom if you're three six five party girl French munch girl wipe away the residue keep Okay, so 365 is the song that like caps off the album, you know? Uh, and the whole album, Charlie is like really, you know, diving in and out of like her own personal contradictions, right? You know, these, these desires that she has to like be a mother, to be a better friend. Um, and then just like going from there, like straight back into partying, you know? Um, and like, in 365, she moves back from, like, this very introspective position mm -hmm. of, like, you know, really investigating these contradictions straight back into the party, you know, immediately. And it, like, it begs the question, like, does she ever, you know, go on to re resolve these contradictions she has, get to the root of these contradictions of, like, you know, why, why do I feel so scared to, to be a mother? You know, why do I uh, not feel like I'm being, you know, a good enough friend to my friends, uh, a good enough feminist, uh, you know, all of these things. Uh, and she goes, like, from, from those thoughts, instead of, like, really diving into the root of them, just straight back into the party. Yeah, you know, we see when there's no mention of revolution, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. kind of, there's no resolution. There, there, um. There's no resolution, there's no purpose. And purpose is something that she's searching for through the entire album. She thinks particularly that she'll find it in being a mother. And... You know, does she dive down into like what is what is the root of like why I think this will give me purpose in some way? You know, no, no, she doesn't. Uh, she like, I, it, it's very fearful. You know what I mean? It's very fearful. It seems like she's really afraid to like resolve these contradictions in any meaningful way. Yeah, and that's why like, it's kind of like when you do like take a deeper analysis of things like you kind of get really like left unsettled by like the overall album um like ethel and i were talking about how after analyzing it like it is kind of sad yeah yeah it's a really sad album after you take like a deep look into it after you really investigate its contradictions it's an incredibly sad album you know yeah. because she's really diving into a lot of like real problems for her you know uh, all of these like desires and fears that she has and then she just backs away from it you know the it, it like loops back around like I think it's a very interesting that like the album starts with 360 and ends with 365 both big uh, bumping party songs um, and like to me it just seems like her not resolving this contradiction is just starting this loop of the album over you know it's like she is going to, you know, go through this whole process over again and, like, have it be more intense, you know? Yeah, like, she talks about how what a brat means to her is someone who is insecure, um, but they cover it up by, like, hyperconfidence. Exactly. And we, we really do see, like, this theme, you know, there's, there's lots of insecurities, there's struggle, but at the end of the day, it's about, you know, masking it. It's about, you know, society's collapsing, but, like, all we can control is, you know, looking good, dancing, I'm going to go to the club. At the club. <laughs> um, and I'm going to do a bunch of drugs at the club, you know what I mean? And like, while, like, you know, I was for that, I was like, yes, like, brat girl summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the same time, you know, we, we don't have to, like, resign to that kind of, like, helplessness. It, it's escapist helplessness, you mm -hmm. know? It, like this is this these types of things you know come out of fear out of like not wanting to investigate your own personal contradictions the contradictions of society and really looking towards like how can we how can we change society you know what i mean and that's why like revolutionary hope is something that really needs to like ground artists like that optimism in understanding that the masses do have the power to you know take down capitalism mm -hmm. to pursue collective liberation that the historical progression of society is a moneyless classless stateless society and you know the masses can take up their historical role to pursue that liberation we can be part of it 
Um, you know, when you surround yourself with that kind of community, it gets really encouraging. Um, but yeah, so instead of kind of just like resigning to um, not really like being able to do anything, kind of just like hedonism in the moment, pleasure seeking, um, we, we can, you know, like sustain the revolutionary struggle and recognize like what it takes collectively to pursue that. Exactly. We can we can not only pursue what's best for ourselves, but we can pursue what's best for for all of society, you know? We can change society. You know what I mean? That's like something that we as humans have like this this gift where we're we're capable of cha changing society, you know, in any way we see fit. Uh, and like Right now, you know, we have this historical position where it's like, you know, the proletariat is the masses of society. You know, most people in society are, are working people. Mm -hmm. And, like, working people, you know, have the ability to, to shape society, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, revolutionary hope and revolutionary optimism is something that I, I think that, that thought should give us, you know, is that, like, people do have the ability to change all of society, you know, for the better. Um, and in a way that resolves a lot of the existing contradictions, you know, so. Yeah, and, you know, with that, we just, like, want to encourage people to, like, engage in this type of, like, critique of art more often, um, really, like, challenge the idea that any art is apolitical. Um, I'm really glad, like, we, we took a deep dive on this. Yeah, it was, yeah, like, me really too. really fun and, like, way richer than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. It, it, it was far it was far more interesting than I expected it to be as a political subject, you know? Um, and it, it was hard, too. Yeah, I yeah, didn't want to admit it, that it, Charlie is as bougie as she is. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. It was disappointing. <laughs> it was disappointing because it's like, oh, I love the album, but it's like, no, I hate everything you're saying. <laughs> um, so it's like, yeah, you know, we really just need to, like, start, like, upholding, you know, Better, better working class standards for art, you know? Like, mm -hmm. art that really supports the working class, you know? Uh, yeah. Drawing, like, real lines that we can stand on uh, and, like, really uphold, like, you know, working class art and working class leadership uh, in society. Because as we've seen, like, you know, bourgeois leadership is just gonna take us nowhere, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, I think, like, that you know, working class leadership, especially in the realm of art, is something that, like, one, is, like, really starting to emerge. We're starting to see a lot more of it. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, it is very hopeful and inspiring, so. Yeah, I'm glad, like, in these times, people are recognizing more and more, like, how much art needs to speak to the times. And, yeah. like, be a, you know, an accurate, like, sober <laughs> reflection of, like, the, the times as, like, you know, Nina Simone would put it, but um, yeah, so like hopefully y'all got something mm -hmm. useful from this. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Yeah. Uh, it felt like it went by so fast. I know. We had a great time uh, discussing the album. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. I think that's it for us. Yeah. Are we good? Thanks, y'all.